Today's guests brought their product line into thousands of Walmart, Lowe's, and Ace Hardware brick and mortar stores, and also grew their business on Amazon and other online retailers. If you're looking to grow your product sales in online or physical retail, then you'll love this interview. Are you looking for new ways to make your sales grow? You've tried other podcasts, but they don't seem to know. Harvest the growth potential of your product or service as we share stories and strategies that'll make your competitors nervous. Now, here's the host of the Harvest Growth Podcast, John LeClaire. I'm so excited to have on the show with us today, Molly and Bob Thorson. Now, they are the inventor. So Bob is the inventor, co-founder of littleburrows.com. We're going to talk about their product. Really cool product. Uh, it's had great success. That we'll we'll talk about their story along the way. And then his daughter Molly is also on the on the interview with us. She's the chief operating officer of the company. Uh, they've got again great story to share with you today. So please listen in, and I'm sure you're going to really enjoy this. Molly and Bob, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> again, thanks for taking the time. Let's let's jump in and talk first about. What is the Little Burrow? So you've got a couple of products under that, under the Little Burrows branding. What's the main product? What does it do? Great. So yes, we have two products. Um, what we started with was the original Little Burrow, which is a garden tray that sits over your wheelbarrow, holding your long handle tools, your short handle tools, your drinks. Um, it also holds your um, like seeds, your sunglasses, your keys. Um, what we made fits onto a four, five, six, and seven cubic foot wheelbarrow. Um, and we have that second version, which is a smaller version um, and really is our best seller. It's called the Burrow Buddy. So it's a garden tray that sits over your wheelbarrow and it organizes all your tools. So you make less trips running back and forth. You keep everything at waist level. You keep everything organized. Um, and it's really just like a garden game changer. You just save time um, and you get to spend more time doing what you love, which is gardening and less time doing what you hate, which is running back and forth and wasting time. So, And how did you originally come up with this idea? It's, you know, some of the best ideas, obviously, are the ones that we look at and like, well, of course, why didn't I think of that, right? Like this is, we should have this. It should have been thought a long time ago, but it wasn't until you. So what made you really spawn the idea originally? Yeah, thank you for the question. I was working with my wife in the garden and she would have her cell phone outside and her a cup of iced tea and a bottle of water and gloves and all these things. And as she would work around the house, she would say, Bob, where's my, where'd I leave this? Where'd I leave that? And I'd say, okay, I it's, it's in the front yard. I'll go get it and bring it to her. And it was I was constantly looking for things that she was leaving as she was gardening. And so the idea occurred to me, maybe we could come up with something that would sit on a wheelbarrow and hold all these things in place. And so she would just move the wheelbarrow around with her. So I made a cardboard uh, with duct tape prototype and, and showed it to my family and they said, Dad, this is a great idea. Let's keep researching it. So that's what that's what that's how it started. Love it. And I'm sure you've got a lot of personal experiences, but you guys have had some great success along the way as well, both in retail and online. And we'll dive into some more specifics later on in that. But have you heard any stories coming back in from customers, how this is change their gardening. You know, a lot of times you get great reviews and just interactions with customers to, to see how you've changed their lives, or at least their gardening, uh, for sure, along the way. Any, any interesting stories along the way? Well, we get a lot of interesting stories. We get a lot of interesting emails, of, um, especially we are on Shark Tank and we had like the most phenomenal um, I'm not going to say fans because we don't have fans, but like the most phenomenal feedback from just viewers of Shark Tank. But I think my favorite one, and dad can go into his if um, he wants, but we had been going to a buyer's meeting for years for a pretty big uh, hardware company. And for years they said, no, we're not going to put it in store. We're not going to put it in store. And then one day I get an email from that buyer and he said, Molly, I was out building a fence and I had to run back and get my shovel. I had to run back and get the fence post and I had to run back and get the bag of cement. And he said, I needed 
a borough buddy. And from then on, I knew that we need you in stores. And he invited us back and put us um, on shelves the next year. So just seeing that buyer um, like go out and use his tools and realize that there is a simpler way. And now that he knew about it, um, he really wanted to have, have that product and give it to his customers. So for me, that was probably one of the most interesting stories. Um, but honestly, it really warms my heart to see it. Um, I see it on a lot of wedding registries. I see it on baby shower gifts. So just seeing people going through these new phases of lives uh, and wanting the burrow buddy to be one of those gifts that they received during that, that's probably um, my favorite as well. So. I, bo both great stories um, or types of stories, I guess. The retailer reminds me. So, you know, my background is with some of the early days of OxyClean years ago. And we had something similar happen to us where the, it was the buyer's wife of Sam's Club back in the day that had heard about the infomercial for OxyClean, tried the product, loved it. And same thing. So went back to her husband and said, why don't, why don't you have this product so we can buy it locally at our Sam's yeah. Club? And it that was a part of the spawn or the, you know, the, the initial direction of the company in, in terms of retail that went on to great success after that. And, and likewise for you, you know, you've got, you've grown your retail presence beyond since that point. So can you talk about what retailers, uh, brick and mortar retailers you're currently in? Yeah. So right now we're in, um, we're in select ACE and true values as well as do it best um, and select Oracles. We're also in um, Menards, uh, Bleed and Farm. We are in Lowe's and we're in Walmart. <laughs> so Fantastic. And what was the first retailer? Sometimes that's the hardest to get. Once you've got a, a success story, it becomes a little bit easier to get into other retailers. So what was the first big retailer that you would consider a success? I think our first purchase order ever, um, and this wasn't a brick and mortar retailer, but it was a catalog, uh, was Plow and Heart. <laughs> and um, I love our buyer at Plow and Hearth. I see him at every show. Um, and it, it was just so big for us because it was the first purchase order we ever received. So it's not a brick and mortar, but um, they were our first ones ever. And that was about seven years ago. Um, and we were just so happy. So what about you? I think uh, the first brick and mortar large one was probably Target. We got into Target and and we were across the uh, country in their stores. And that was exciting to see. That's great. I mean, both big, big brand names in their own regard. Maybe there's a similar answer to this question for both the, the online or magazine, as well as the brick and mortar retailer. What do you think helped you most to get into store or into their catalog? There were so, there so <laughs> many things that we can Hard question. say. Um, I'm going to say, and I, I'm no doubt will have his, but I'll say uh, perseverance. Perseverance. Uh, yeah. I think looking at our journey with Walmart um, and our journey with Lowe's, we've been meeting with these buyers for over six years. And every year we went back and every year we listened to their feedback, um, you know, change the packaging, change the amount that are in the, um, the, the selling case, like change little aspects, um, everything from like placement of UPC codes, like every feedback they gave us, we took into consideration and kind of just changed it as much as we could. Um, to make it the best version of itself and not just their feedback, but also the consumer feedback. Yeah. So just listening to reviews and, and honestly, that's how our second product, the Burrow Buddy came, um, came into, uh, into play because we listened to our first product was a little bit too big for some of the consumers. So we, we shrinked it down and made the Burrow Buddy, which is our best selling um, out of the two. And and just persevering, being able to take advice and being able to take that advice and use it to improve your product um, is something something that I think has, has made a huge difference in, in getting into those retailers. Yeah, John, that's exactly right. I, I would just second what Molly said, is perseverance, listening to feedback, 
uh, the original little borough, we, we heard that it was taking up too much floor space or self shelf space and the retailers the price point was a little too high. So we came up with the borough buddy, which is like fine tuned. Uh, we, we haven't been able to improve on the borough buddy, but it took the first step of uh, coming up with the original little borough, listening to the feedback, being persistent, like Molly said, so uh, that's what I would recommend to your listeners that you don't give up. Yeah, I love that. I, and it's it's a common answer. I think it's, it's a, especially when dealing with retailers, it takes that perseverance of just working at it, keep trying. And it's rare that you hear, oh, they called me up because they saw it somewhere, right? It's like, it's that does happen, right? As you mentioned, it, you know, sometimes you get that story, but but a lot of them, it just takes time, effort, pushing, and then comes the success, whether that's in brick and mortar, whether that's in online or really any form of the business. But I love how you talked both, both of you about the other word was listen, right? So that's listening to customers, absolutely. But also being open to listening to retailers, right? They they do know their customer very well. And their customer might be different from your direct to consumer customer that you're selling on Amazon or through your own website or or what have you. So it is they it listening to their feedback and not just doing it as a okay, they told me to do it, so I have to do it, but realizing that they know their customer. And sometimes I've, you know, I've seen a lot of success stories you probably have as well, where you learn something from your retailer, you make a change packaging or whatever it might be, and then you implement that across other retailers or on your own website or on Amazon and also see growing results there too. So being able to realize, you know, we when you're an inventor, right? You, you have ownership. You came up with this amazing idea. You created it, but it's okay and really helpful to listen to others to continue to help improve it along the way. So that's, that's yeah. a, another great point to bring up. So let's shift gears and talk about online as well. So you, you have a lot of success on, on the retail side, both brick and mortar catalog, et cetera. How about online? So where are you successful or where are you seeing revenues come in in the online world? Online is such an interesting portal for us because when we started out this uh, business and with this product uh, 10 years ago, online was never our end goal. Our end goal was always brick and mortar, um, especially with such a large product. Um, you never really, and 10 years ago, shipping was a total different ball game. Shipping was a, a lot um, higher of an expense than it is now. So Really in the past year, five years, we've really focused on building kind of like an online strategy and building out our um, our product for online as well as brick and mortar. Um, I think our greatest success has been on Amazon. Um, and even then, it's been um, really a trial and error with their Amazon. Um, for a lot of people, going with Amazon Prime is the way to go. But our product is so large that the storage fees for Amazon Prime really wasn't beneficial for us. So looking at that Amazon seller fulfilled, that's where we kind of have found our niche in the Amazon sphere, if you will. Um, so I think that would probably be our number one. And um, we love walmart.com. Um, as we mentioned, we're in store at Walmart too. So um, finding those outlets where we have both an online presence and an in-store presence is really great because that allows us to have that dual purpose marketing. Um, so, you know, but we love, we love, our Amazon platform. So if you're listening, you can go find us, um, the Burrow Buddy on Amazon. Right. Just search for the little burrow, or the original little burrow or the Burrow Buddy to find yeah. your products, right? On Amazon. But John, I'd like to expand on that a little bit is that we didn't fulfill, we didn't want to warehouse and fulfill ourselves. In other words, we didn't want to have it where people come to our website and buy directly from us. We wanted to direct them to Amazon or to Walmart or to Lowe's to throw, to open up the brick and mortar. Uh, that's, I think, something I want your uh, uh, audience to understand that in some of the times when you take all the orders yourself and fulfill them and you don't push them through the other stores, uh, you, you may be hurting yourself in the long run because the brick and mortars stores look at how the your product selling through their website through their portal to determine if they want it in their stores so 
you know, that was sort of a strategy we had to, to throw as much through Lowe's and Home Depot and Walmart as we could. And, and it worked. They, they saw it was selling well and they said, well, we'd like to get it in the store. So I would just have your audience keep that in mind if they're planning to do this. Uh, just don't jump all in on fulfilling it yourself without giving it a lot of thought. Yeah, yeah great point. I think just to to go further into what dad was saying, because that is a really good point. I'm glad you said that. Um, when we were building out all of this too, um, every little thing comes into play. Even um, like when we're selling on Amazon, your searchability is so much higher on Amazon than it can be on your own website. Um, just looking at other things that can be um, boosters for your sales in other areas and looking at it as the whole rather than just online. Um, it, it really is beneficial to have a robust strategy and not just a selling online in one portal. Right. No, great points. You know, we've helped launch hundreds of products in the last 16 years. And one thing I've learned is every launch is different, right? The strategy is what I, I love how you talked about Amazon, for example, where the common, if you go to, if you Google, how do I best sell on Amazon? Amazon Prime is the answer, right? In a blog, right? If you read through like, okay, so you think, okay, well, that's the right thing for me. And it's, maybe that is right for 80% of businesses or whatever, but there are different reasons. Make sure that you understand your own business strategy. So for you guys, because of the size of the product, seller fulfilled made a lot more sense. And it's different how you're going to take it to market on Amazon and in other channels than another product might be. So realizing that there is no standard answer that works for everything. It's about finding the right strategy for your, for your own product to lead to success. But I also love, and I wouldn't reiterate for our audience, the thought of uh, the strategy of starting with success online. It's a lot easier. It's not easy, but it's a lot easier to get onto walmart.com with a product than it is to get into the brick and mortar stores, right? But it's a great stepping stone showing success there, as you said, can lead to, to getting into and seeing success in the brick and mortar stores. And very similar to driving traffic to your own website, you can do a marketing campaign, paid campaigns, PR, et cetera, that drive traffic to Amazon, to walmart.com, to other online retailers that can then, like you said, think long-term in the strategy if your goal is to get into, into brick and mortar retail stores as well. Yes. And even things that you don't initially think about, but when you're not fulfilling or when you're fulfilling from all these different websites, like using your shipping and getting that volume shipping discount rather than using the Amazon Prime shipping um, can help you get lower shipping discounts on different websites. So just little nuances that really can make a huge difference in your profit and in your margins. Um, just really paying attention to those. And like you said, customizing them to your product and to your, um, your company rather than just a, a blanket statement that most people go by is, is, is a good idea. Well said. I, one of the things I love about your story as well is that you give back. So can you talk a little bit about the organization that you, from your business, provide funds to and help support? Yes. Yeah, so we are really passionate. One, uh, when dad thought of this concept and when he presented it to all of um, the us kids, um, originally our, us five dads had five kids. Um, I'm the youngest. Um, and then my sister, Becca, and my three older brothers. Um, we knew that if this product was to go to market and go into production, it would 100% have to be made in the USA because just as a ethics, as a family, that's kind of always been the backbone of um, not just giving back to the American economy, but supporting American jobs and um, like ethical labor as well. We knew that if we had a product made in the United States, we would never have to wonder about where this material was sourced from or um anything surrounding labor trafficking. Um, so as a part of our company, we give back to A21, which is a global anti-trafficking organization that battles human trafficking all around the world, including here in the United States. Um, we started our efforts in giving back um, when my sister Becca passed away. 
Um, she was a phenomenal woman. She was our uh, CFO at the time, and she was just a heart of justice and had a heart and compassion for, um, I like to say the good, right, and real things of the world. Um, so when we were giving back, um, we knew that this wouldn't be a really obvious choice for us. So we've been able to give back to A21 for um, seven years now, and we've uh, held a walk in Washington, D.C. every year um, in her honor and have had thousands of people walking with us um, and through that walk have raised over um, a quarter of a million dollars in the past seven years. So wow. we're really proud of our work with them um, and see a huge difference being made. And um, we love that every person who buys a little borough and a borough buddy gets a card on the back that says you're supporting A21 in honor of Becca Thorson. And I can tell you some of the greatest joy and and peaks in my career of working for little boroughs has been knowing that um, like tens of thousands of people are getting a product that has my sister's name on the back and has um, you're supporting A21 on the back too. So for us, it's never just been about building um, a brand and making a bunch of money. It's about being a part of the community and doing um, what we can with what we have. So well said. <laughs> well said. Thank you for sharing that story. And I think, you know, a lot of people talk about giving to get, right? Not, not in a negative sense, but as we give of ourselves, of our companies, of our time, our money, our resources, it's, it more comes back to us, right? And that's a great benefit. But it's the, the most successful people that I see, they give from their heart, right? And you'll get from it, right? I'm sure this has helped grow your company. But there's a difference when it's the why, right? When you have a personal why behind what you're doing, you know, as customers of your company, we admire you, right? So we we seek it out and it's a positive experience for us and we buy more, right? So it's a it's a great benefit, but it isn't the why. It's it's about finding the right uh, purpose behind your giving, whatever that might be. And this is a personal story that fits for you and your brand. And I believe every company should find their own personal story that they should really get behind that means something to them. And it's going to mean something to the, to the customers and their uh, people that follow them as well. And really the most importantly, gives you the chance to really give in a, in a big and meaningful way. So thank you for that story. That's fantastic. Are there any resources that you guys recommend that have been really helpful to you as a business? So Unfortunately for the audience listening, my number one resource has been my dad. So I can't, I can't. So what's I your can't phone number? <laughs> yeah, I can't. You can maybe email him, maybe you <laughs> on your website, but uh, my dad would be my biggest resource. Uh, dad's been an entrepreneur all his life. Um, and I grew up watching him in a family business aspect and uh, I learned everything from him. So he's been my biggest resource, but he has lots of good advice. So let's hear. <laughs> well, I, I learned a lot from my dad. So we're just <laughs> continuing the, you know, he was a businessman and taught me. And so it's just, I can't think of one resource like a, a, a magazine or something that I turn to or, or, or even a school, but I'm sure there's lots of them out there. And I, I would, tell your audience to to search and find out what is a good reference for them, a resource for them. Well, I think I, I actually love the answer both of you gave, right? So for you, it's your dad and it doesn't, whether it's our parents or whatever it is, people are a phenomenal resource, right? So you know, if people listening, you may have a dad that has entrepreneurial experience, fantastic, go to him, right? Or a mom, but it also could be a friend or somebody in the in the area to reach out to, but finding a mentor, whether you're related to them or not, but people are, are, a, are a fantastic resource. So that's a great answer. I think it's something that everybody should consider. Was there anything I didn't ask in this interview that you guys think would be helpful for our audience? So I real quickly also just want to go back to that resource question. I love now also looking at other entrepreneurs' stories. So I think your podcast is a great resource listening to other entrepreneurs, but just even like movies, Shark Tank. Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah. just looking at other entrepreneurs and seeing their mistakes and seeing um, how you can learn from them and listening to their advice too. I, I think advice is 
um, is some of the best. So sorry, but. No, perfect. Thank you very much. And this has been super helpful. And I think that's great advice as well. So I encourage the audience, please go check out their website, littleburrows.com. If you're driving, this will all be in the show notes. So go check it out as well. You can also search for their products on Amazon. Uh, it's also available on walmart.com or of course in retailers near everybody across the United States. <laughs> so Little Burrows and the, the Burrow Buddy as well. Great products. Please go check them out and, and learn more from the story of of uh, this great company. So Molly and Bob, thanks again for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, John. Please go to littleburrows.com or search for the original Little Burrow or the Burrow Buddy at walmart.com, amazon.com, or your favorite local retailer. Also be sure to check out harvestgrowth.com to see other episodes of recorded. And if you like this episode and you want to learn more about how you can profitably grow your consumer product or service business, please subscribe to our show. Or you can set up an appointment right from our website to speak directly with a member of the Harvest Growth team in a free consultation to learn the process that has worked for hundreds of businesses since 2007. 